Hello, everybody, and welcome to Quicken Loans Arena for a special edition of More Sports and Less Levine. It's Thursday evening. I'm Dave Bacon filling uh, with the MAC, and uh, we continue to grow and expand our relationship. The commissioner has been great to work with. It's a wonderful footprint for us to be able to attract folks uh, from the MAC conference overall and uh, create more passion for uh, folks to come visit Myrtle Beach. Uh, you brought the weather too, nice weather. I know it's raining, but uh, I'll take the 70 degree weather here in yeah, March. Yeah, 70, 70 and sunnies is what we're trying to keep right there. I got gotcha. you. Now, you're going to be expanding the relationship even further coming up uh, with a bowl game. That's exciting. Tell us about it and, and tell us how that came to be. Yeah, it's really exciting for us in Myrtle Beach. Uh, next year, 2020, will be the inaugural Myrtle Beach Bowl. And that will pit one of the MAC conference champions uh, or uh, somebody else in that conference uh, against a couple others. So we're really excited to be able to have that synergy between the basketball and the football and bring them on down. Uh, it's really great too that uh, we also have the Myrtle Beach Invitational and uh, that happens every November, uh, ESPN sports event. And we have the Ohio Bobcats coming down this November. So we're excited to really continue that relationship uh, with the MAC. Yeah, so the, uh, that's a preseason tournament to kind of go along with the uh, MAC championship tournament that you've sponsored for a couple of years. Um, how has that gone and, and how excited are you to get that rolling? Oh, uh, it's, it's, it's just going to be a wonderful event. You know, Myrtle Beach is evolving into a really strong sports destination. And so we're leveraging basketball. Now we're bringing football into the mix. But youth sports and college sports, it's just a great destination to be able to come down and uh, uh, enjoy some athletics and, of course, our 60 miles of beautiful beaches. Now the, the other thing is direct flight, flights from Cleveland to Myrtle Beach, and um, they start real soon. Oh, real soon. As a matter of fact, Spirit will start uh, the season this Saturday. So uh, three flights a week, nonstop to Myrtle Beach. Allegiant will pick up uh, mid-May. Uh, and then throughout the state, we've got a couple uh, carriers flying nonstop out of Columbus and again uh, Cincinnati. So uh, we love Ohioans. And uh, so uh, all of you are welcome to come down. <laughs> uh, Great golf courses. Amazing golf courses. So, yes, we are the golf capital of the world. So come on down enjoy our beautiful beaches, wonderful, amazing golf and the southern hospitality is just uh, exquisite. How, uh, how long is the flight? It's a direct flight, it's only gotta be a couple hours. Oh, it's less than that, about an hour and a half. Yeah, it's quick. 90 minutes and you're, yeah, you're, you're in you're the on sunshine? The beach. Well, look at that. Yeah, I like it. Um, tell me a little bit just how the relationship has, has grown and evolved. You, you mentioned how, uh, how good the MAC has been to you. Um, is that why you're looking to expand it, obviously, the, the results that you've seen as well? Yeah, most definitely. You know, like, like I mentioned earlier, just where the conference is, the passion of the fans, the alumni base that the school has, great audiences, family support for a family beach destination like ours. And as we're trying to broaden our summer reach into the uh, shoulder seasons, get more people in the spring and in the fall, it's a good way for us to continue uh, inspiring folks to want to come down and visit. Scott, we appreciate the time very much. Keep up the great work. We so we've got a bowl coming. We've got, got the Invitational. Yes, sir. And, uh, I imagine you're going to be the, the MAC uh, tournament presenting sponsor for a while. Uh, it, it seems like it's a really good relationship. Yeah, it's been a great fit. So hats off to the commissioner. He's uh, really helped and done a great job with us. Got to love the venue, too. It's oh, a perfect great. setting for, uh, for college basketball. Yeah, it's perfect. Scott, we appreciate the time. I enjoy it. Thanks. Scott, Scott Schultz from VisitMyrtleBeach.com, the presenting sponsor of the Mid-American Conference Basketball Tournament, both the men's and women's. It's men's quarterfinal action at Quicken Loans Arena. You have time. Hop on down a couple of good games uh, that will qualify two teams into the semifinals tomorrow night. We're going to step aside, take a quick time out here at Quicken Loans Arena. When we return, we'll talk to Dr. John Steinbrecher. He's the commissioner of the Mid-American Conference. You're watching More Sports and Les Levine, a special edition from Quicken Loans Arena and the MAC Basketball Tournament. The heart-pounding, fast-breaking action of college basketball is back when the 2019 Mid-American Conference Basketball Tournament returns to the queue March 13th through the 16th, presented by Visit Myrtle Beach. Pulses will rise and hearts will race as the men and women of the MAC put it all on the line. Tickets for the MAC tournament are on sale now at the Q Box Office, online at thequeuearena.com, and at all Northern Ohio discount drug marts. MAC Tournament Basketball, be there. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. 
There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It's the best of the best, Cleveland. All-Star cars, hot rods, and motorcycles at the 2019 Summit Racing Equipment IX Piston-Powered Autorama. March 15th, 16th, and 17th at the IX Center. If a piston makes it go, it's in this all-star show. Featuring motorcycles, antique trucks, insane hot rods in the asylum, tractors, military vehicles, along with all-star themed car clubs on display. New this year is Fat Man's Invasion with Euro Imports, Sport Compacts, Lowriders, and more. PistonPowerShow.com for details. Kids 12 and under are free. Discount tickets on sale now at select discount drug mart locations and Summit Racing Equipment in Talmadge. Welcome back to Quicken Loans Arena, more sports than Les Levine. I'm Dave Bacon, filling in for Les Levine. We are pleased to be joined by the commissioner of the Mid-American Conference, Dr. John Steinbrecher. Dr. Steinbrecher, always appreciate the time. Uh, it is that week, uh, MAC Tournament Week. Again, uh, just a great week setting up for uh, what will be two bids to the NCAA Tournament. Absolutely, Dave. Welcome to our house. <laughs> you know, four days and 14 games. So an awful lot of basketball and a lot of really, really good basketball. You know, on the, the men's side of it, we're the ninth ranked conference in the country. You know, basically top third, in fact, better than top third. Women's side, we're the seventh ranked conference, top 20, top quartile. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I think we're, we're, we know we have two teams going on. Uh, good Maybe. chance on both sides to have multiple teams going on. And even more importantly, we need to go on and make some noise in the tournament. Well, a year ago, two of the women's teams went to the Sweet 16. Two of them, not only qualified, went to the Sweet 16, both Central Michigan and Buffalo. It's been a really good year. Uh, a lot of successes over a lot of different um, sports. Talk about some of the successes that went on in football. Well, absolutely. You know, really nice football year. Multiple wins over Big Ten teams and an array of other uh, autonomous or what a general public would call them power five. I don't <laughs> call them that. I call them autonomous. Uh, five, which is a governance designation in the NCA. You know, when we go into soccer and in Akron had actually our whole league. We were one of the top four yep. soccer conferences in the country, multiple teams in the NCA tournament. Uh, Akron goes on to the College Cup, which is the final four. And I think they've done that, what, three out of the past four or three out of the past five. You know, it's getting to be a tradition with those folks. And that's, that's nice to see. And it's nice to see how deep we've become as a, in a league in that sport. You know, volleyball, we were deep again. Uh, uh, wrestling, we're, we're a week away from the NCAA Wrestling Championships and we've got 30, I don't know, mid-30s on to the National Championship, have the fifth ranked team in the, in the country. So I, I think what we found is the top teams in virtually all of our sports are among the best teams in the country in whatever that sport is. And you touched on wrestling, some big news is, is you're going to be welcoming in eight new wrestling programs to the Mid-American Conference, making the MAC the second largest wrestling conference in the country. Some thoughts behind doing that and how important that is to you. You know what, we've been uh, an elite wrestling conference for a handful of years now, and by that I mean we're a top three, top four conference year in, year out. Uh, but as we sat here, we, we thought there were a, a handful of schools out there we thought could make us better. But as we looked at that, we thought what that would do to the league they were in. And we didn't want to do anything that in any way hurt other wrestling programs. So we said, let's just bring the whole group in and we'll really have a super conference. And it's kind of the rising tide lifts all boats theory. And what it does is it gives us the best wrestling footprint in the country. We go from essentially Missouri to the East Coast. We're the hotbed of wrestling all through there. Uh, it's, you won't believe the number of interviews I did through the state of Pennsylvania <laughs> when we announced this. I mean, the place went crazy, and that's wonderful. And so I hope we can do some really neat things beyond just the typical great conference tournament. You know, maybe we can roll out a dual meet conference championship as well, some things like that. But what we also expect is, you know, we're going to compete for national championships individually and nationally. Now you also hosted, in conjunction with this building, uh, the wrestling championships and set attendance records right about this year, uh, this time last year yes. here at Quicken Loans Arena. Is, is that kind of in the mindset as well? You, you'd like to host nationals again? I, I know the conference has, has done that in conjunction with this building quite a bit. Absolutely. In fact, uh, uh, we will put in, I think the next bid cycle opens up this summer. 
Uh, yeah, we'll be active on that, and I think we'll be looked at favorably. As you noted, we set an overall attendance record, we set a single session attendance record, we set a revenue record. It's a great building. We're, we're so fortunate to have Quicken Loans Arena in this community, great partners with us. We're going to be hosting first and second round NCAA Men's Basketball Championship next year as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about swimming and diving. There's another nationally ranked team uh, on the women's side in Akron, and, and they qualified a number of people to the upcoming nationals. And it just seems like they keep raising the bar for the entire conference. That, you know, that, that program's turned into a juggernaut. Uh, in the past five years, they've just kind of taken over in terms of women swimming in our league, and good for them. And it, it's a credit to the coaching staff and the institution, and you're absolutely right. And so, yeah, again, that's another one of those sports we really enjoy, and we send a number of individuals on the nationals every year. As you look at the conference, you've got to be mindful of everything. How, how pleased are you at how you've grown? And you kind of touched on it. There's a number of teams at the higher levels that are elite, and when that happens, it raises the entire bar for the rest of the conference. Absolutely, I mean, we're in a competitive business. When someone excels, other people want to be at that same level, and it just drives that. You know, we, we offer championships in 23 sports. We do a lot of things. Now, not everybody has every sport, and as a league, we've tried to set some priorities and said, we want to make sure for sure in these X, Y, and Z sports, we're going to be really good, but then let's also have institutional priorities as well. And it's those institutional priorities that drive everybody else as well. So we got some schools that really spend a lot of time on wrestling, but it also drives other people. Soccer, Akron, we know has had a great program, but you look what their, their, the quality of that program has helped drive what's going on in soccer at Bowling Green in Western Michigan. And we can go through virtually every one of our sports like that. How satisfying is it when you sit here and, and watch this tournament and see the quality of play? And you mentioned how highly ranked both the men's and women's are in conference rankings. You have to sit back and say, we're not done yet as well. Well, exactly right. You always want more. But it, it's, it's gratifying to see the uh, hard work and effort by our schools. And it starts with hiring just outstanding coaches. And on both the men's and women's side, we've got some great coaches in this league. And then, you know, they put together good staffs, they recruit well, they X and O, they motivate, they do all those things. And when you put that together, we do some strategic things with scheduling or, or some other stuff, then it all comes together. And, but it starts with people. And our presidents hire good ADs, ADs hire good coaches, and it goes from there. We are with uh, Dr. John Steinbrecher. Uh, Dr. Steinbrecher, why don't you stick around? We're going to talk a little bit about a couple councils you're on and some NCAA governances that uh, you are also involved with. We have to take a quick time out. We will return to uh, more sports and Les Levine, a special edition here from the MAC Basketball Tournament at Quicken Loans Arena, the commissioner of the Mid-American Conference. Dr. John Steinbrecher will return with us. We're going to take a quick time out, and we will be right back. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. It takes Smiley One heating and cooling to bring the heat when things get chilly. Find us at 440-449-HEAT. Welcome back.
back to more sports and Les Levine here on Cleveland.com. I'm Dave Bacon filling in for Les Levine. Special edition as we are at Quicken Loans Arena, site of the Mid-American Conference Basketball Tournament. Doors are opened up. Toledo and Northern Illinois, the first of two more quarterfinals. So uh, if you're a basketball fan, they'll have time to head on down here to Quicken Loans Arena and see some really good college basketball. Pleased to be joined by the commissioner of the Mid-American Conference, Dr. John Steinbrecher. And Dr. Steinbrecher, you are part of a 20-person council that was put together by USA Football to, to study some of the implications uh, regarding safety of the game. One of only two college administrators on that council. Tell me about the work and uh, how excited you are about being part of that. Yeah, we just had our first meeting Monday of this week in Indianapolis. Uh, the idea is to put together a football developmental model and put together um, essentially a progression of how you play football from the time you pick up a football until you retire. And so it's uh, how can we build the building blocks? What should be taught every step of the way? How should the game be played? Should seven-year-olds be playing 11 on 11 in full equipment on a 100-yard field? for instance, or are there other things we can be doing? And so it will, it'll look at it from a macro level and from a micro level, and it'll be interesting to see where this turns out. Is that something that's really exciting, is, is kind of being able to shape and form in, and try to make some real differences? It is, and it's daunting as well, uh, because there's a lot of work to be done there. You know, football is such a great game, but we're trying to make sure we teach the game in appropriate ways, and perhaps things we taught 15, 20 years ago are not necessarily how we want to teach it today, or perhaps training methods are different, or, uh, you know, a, a simple question is, when should kids start playing tackle football? Should yeah. fourth graders be doing it? Should fifth graders, or maybe should, should it be seventh or eighth grade? You know, those are the types of things you got to start debating. But there's a, all sorts of ways to play football. One of the fastest growing sports in the country today is flag football. So, so I'm, I'm energized by it. It'll be exciting to be a part of that process. Having said that, you're also involved in a number of NCAA governance areas. Tell me about that and how important that is to you as well. Yeah, it's my privilege to represent our conference on a couple different things, and most particularly football-wise, the football oversight and, and uh, football competition committee. Spend, a lot, again, a lot of time talking about the betterment of college football. Uh, the competition committee uh, spends a lot of time on rules-related issues. Uh, football oversight is more management, so uh, bowl qualification, things like that. And, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to represent our conference and hopefully put forward uh, our best thoughts on what, what's in the best interest of college football. One of the things many people may not realize, next season will be the 150th anniversary of college football. And so we'll, there'll be nationwide celebrations throughout our conference. We'll be celebrating on November 6, 2019. Turns out it's a midweek game. We'll have the only game in the country. It'll be Miami at Ohio, and that will be the 150th anniversary game. And we're pleased to be hosting that. That's awesome. Yeah, we're, we're Absolutely excited. awesome. Um, there's some officiating pieces as well. That's a big thing at every level, and I know you're involved in that as well. In terms of college football, the 10 FBS commissioners and two commissioners from the FCS level comprise the College Football Officiating Board of Managers. It's been my privilege to chair that for some time now. And again, we work towards, first and foremost, health and safety of the student athletes, uh, and then try to make sure we have consistency of the application of rules uh, throughout, throughout the sport. So things such as the targeting rule, low hits on quarterbacks, things like that, those have really been initiatives that came through the CFO. Um, and I, it, I think it's been beneficial. And we can, it gives us a chance to continue to provide some oversight, interact with the coaches, interact with administrators, and make sure the best interests of all are moving forward. Uh, as we wrap it up, let me ask you one more question. How much excitement do you get when you have a conference tournament like this? You get a bunch of the schools together. I know you'd love to have all 12 of them here every year. Uh, but you get a bunch of schools gathering. How excited are you when you have everybody gathering in an atmosphere like this? How good is it to see the young men and young women who compete out here and the passion that comes 
with the playing, and you know it's 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 high drama every game, and so the highs are highs and the lows are low, and so there's a range of emotions. But what a neat opportunity! And it's part of why I, I am so enamored with college athletics. I just love that passion that comes from it. It's it's different to me than the pro game, and the pro game's great. But I just love what we see out here. Well, we hear the pep band kicking up, and and that's part of it as well. Dr. John Steinbrecher, Commissioner of the Mid-American Conference. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate you having us. Keep up the good work. So good to be with you. Thanks. And we are going to take a quick time out. We will return. It's a special edition of More Sports and Less Levine from the Mid-American Conference Tournament. It's men's quarter final night. Toledo in Northern Illinois getting set to tip off. You're watching More Sports and Less Levine here on Cleveland.com. We've got to take a quick time out. We'll be right back. Concrete in your garage is uneven, cracked, pitted, and just plain ugly. Transform your garage into a welcoming entryway with Nature Stone flooring. Reduce tracked in dirt, eliminate puddling and salt damage. Plus, Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone is the affordable garage floor solution that beautifies your home. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Welcome back, Quicken Loans Arena. It is a special edition of More Sports and Les Levine here on Cleveland.com. We are at the Mid-American Conference Men's Quarterfinals. Toledo getting set to tip off with Northern Illinois, the third of four quarterfinals here on quarterfinal Thursday on the men's side of things at the Mid-American Conference. Glad you joined us. Well, some history in the OHSAA today. Kirsten Bell of Canton McKinley was named Ms. Basketball for the third straight year. She becomes the first ever three-time Ms. Basketball in Ohio. Point of reference, there has only been one three-time Mr. Basketball in the state of Ohio. That was a guy called LeBron James. Uh, he won it back in the early 2000s. Kirsten Bell from Canton McKinley makes history, and she is our Ohio Lottery Partners in Education shining star. On the basketball court, Kirsten Bell is always smiling and having fun, and that makes sense. She's one of the all-time greats in OHSAA history. Bell ends her career at McKinley fourth on the OHSAA career scoring list with over 2,800 points. Ahead of Samika Randall and Katie Smith, both who were collegiate superstars, Bell in her senior season dealt with the talk she could become the first ever three-time Ms. Basketball in Ohio. By way of comparison, LeBron James is the only three-time Mr. Basketball in the state. It keeps me motivated. Um, just hearing it from me, people, like, I don't really like to brag about it. I'm not really a cocky person, so uh, I let people talk to me about it, smile, thank them. Bell performed her best under pressure. She averaged almost 29 points a game in her senior season and was a force both on the boards and on the defensive end of the court for the Lady Pups. She was having fun and enjoying every minute of it. I love basketball. I've been loving basketball since I was a little kid. My mom said my first word was ball, so she knew I was going to get into sports, but basketball wasn't my only sport. I played football, softball, I did track, so I was like a more an athletic person because my dad, he was very athletic. I would say versatility and dominance um, to, are the two of the adjectives that I would describe because at six foot one, she could play the point if we need her to, but we can have her go down low into the post. 
and she can score from every aspect of the floor. So not too many kids are able to do that. Bell led the Bulldogs to the regional finals. She was never satisfied, always looking for areas of the game that she could tweak and improve. I want to work on my left hand, get better at my left hand, because like my first three years, I really wasn't using my left hand. But my senior year, I got better and better. So I'm just going to keep continuing to work on my left hand and work on my weaknesses. She has to go to bed every night thinking that she's got to score, you know, 25 to 30 points for us to win. And that's a lot of pressure for an 18-year-old. So um, she comes with that true test and competitive spirit night in and night out. A spot in the McDonald's All-American game awaits Kirsten Bell. Next year, she'll head a little south to Columbus to play for the Ohio State Buckeye. I love the coach McGuff. He's a great guy. Uh, I love his uh, personality. He's a great coach. Um, he has he has a great system, great program. Um, I think I fit perfectly in, and it's close to home, so that's another reason why I picked it. Confidence. Um, you know, she thinks that we can beat any opponent. Um, she instills confidence in her teammates uh, by getting them them the ball. Um, she's a kind of an emotional leader when the game is close. Um, and you know, anytime that you have a two-time miss basketball, you're very fortunate because, as you said, that doesn't come around very often. Watch Bell practice and you begin to understand just how driven she is. Kirsten is always first in all the conditioning drills. It helps me in games. It helps me uh, like get in shape, um, get me to the next level. So uh, Ohio State is, is going to be easy to me because I'm going to be in shape. The McKinley basketball program is just get you ready for the next level. Congratulations to Kirsten Bell from Canton McKinley. She becomes the first ever three-time Ms. Basketball in OHSAA history. Now, let's move on. Indians, uh, Francisco Lindor, some good news, played three innings in a minor league exhibition game out in Goodyear, Arizona yesterday. He was ordered to jog if he hit the ball, so not going full out. Did not play in the field, but he has progressed to where he is playing in exhibition games on the minor league fields. Uh, the Indians, they just want to make sure they take it slow with Francisco getting up, and they're really not concerned about opening day just yet. I won't give you a date, no. so you come and ask me. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, with any sort of injury like that, you there's no set date or set timetable. There's a huge, you know, we magnify the importance of opening day and obviously that's on everyone's mind. That's not what we're concerned about. We're concerned about making sure Frankie is completely healthy and in a really good spot to have a full season of performance. So we are taking it day to day. He's been doing really well. He continues to progress in all of his activities. He's been out there a lot. We'll continue to get him out there more, um, but we have to build him up volume wise to where he can be out at his position for the full nine innings. So I don't know how long that's going to take, um, but we want to make sure that he's cleared all of those benchmarks before he's in games. What do you, how do you feel just about the, the crop of guys you've got? Uh, or is that first line of defense if he's not ready to go at the, the start of the season? In terms of shortstop? Short stop. Yeah. Like so I mean, more off and all those that's right. So we have some internal guys and some external guys. Um, it's been really fun to watch some of our young guys. I mean, seeing Eric Stamets out playing defense is really you know, a special glove out there. Um, even some of our other young guys like Ernie Clement, Mark Mathias, just some of these infielders, Yu Chang, the guys who have come up, have really impressed us in camp. Um, we have to make a decision. If Frankie's not going to be on the opening day roster, we obviously have a decision to make about who's going to be our shortstop on opening day. We'll work through those as we get through camp. But between our young guys and some of the veterans like Ryan Flaherty, it feels like we have good options in here to cover us. Well, and uh, another guy that the Indians are taking a look at is Hanley Ramirez. Uh, Ramirez was released by the Boston Red Sox in June of last season and didn't play the rest of the year. Mid-30s guy, but the Indians are hoping that he can add a little bit of punch to the middle of that lineup. So far, Ramirez 4 of 18. Remember, he did report to Goodyear a little bit later, didn't report at the beginning of spring training. Uh, he does have a couple of doubles and five runs batted in. But numbers aren't as important and aren't the only thing the Indians are looking for where Hanley Ramirez is concerned. Hanley can be. Uh, we want to see the best of him here. So I think we'll take the next 10 to 14 days. He obviously was a late arrival. Take the next two weeks and see how that plays out. 
before we make any decisions. At the same time, he's been great having him around in camp. Um, he's you know been very diligent with his work, and you can see whether the results are there or not. You can see the bat speed is there. Um, looks like the old Hanley in a lot of ways. So I think there's a lot that's sort of promising and, and that we're optimistic about, but we'll have to see uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks how that plays out. He was talking about just the, the mindset of, of finishing a season, you know, um, having been on some teams that have done that. Is that an element of, of bringing him in here? Um, you know, his experience on championship caliber clubs, that sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, definitely. You know, it's any sort of veteran player that you're bringing in, you're hopeful that they um, can provide some of that sort of stability or leadership that veteran players often come in with. I think we see right now a relatively young team uh, in the clubhouse, and I don't think we're looking for anybody like Hanley or anybody we bring in to step up and just be the sort of vocal leader. I think we're looking for guys who go about their business the right way, put in their work, uh, and hold themselves and their teammates accountable. He's done all of those things uh, and has a track record of doing that. So, you know, I think that's what we're looking for in any of these players. Does any part of Hanley look different from the guy you saw with the Red Sox in the first half last year? Are there any adjustments the hair. He's made off the, <laughs> <laughs> the most, most importantly, player? the hair, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it's probably too early to comment on that just because we haven't seen enough of him in games. Um, so I, I wouldn't want to speculate on that. But his, you know his body looks in good shape. Like he didn't play the second half of the year. Yeah. Body looks in good shape. Swing looks very similar. Bat speed looks good. Um, so I, you know, I'm not sure that there's anything drastically standing out. Well, if the bat speed are there and the swing looks good, Hanley Ramirez can likely help the Indians. They they need some help in the middle of that order. We are going to take a, a quick timeout. Uh, step aside, take a quick timeout. We are at Quicken Loans Arena, site of the Mid American Conference. Men's quarterfinal game, Toledo in Northern Illinois. Still plenty of time to get down here. It's the first of two games in the night session. You're watching more sports than Les Levine here on Cleveland.com. When my dad started Nature Stone, he created a solution for age-old concrete problems, unevenness, cracking, pitting, and more. Nature Stone solves all of these problems in garages, basements, and outdoor spaces. Nature Stone is beautiful, environmentally friendly, and affordable. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Welcome back to More Sports and Les Levine here on Cleveland.com. Dave Bacon filling in for Les Levine at Quicken Loans Arena, Mid-American Conference Basketball Tournament. And we are pleased to be joined by the Associated Press's Tom Withers, covers the Browns and has for a long time for the AP, among other things. Uh, but, Tom, uh, what about the excitement and the buzz uh, around the Browns? And, wow. and uh, how uh, it's, it's, it's been a while. Christmas in March, right? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's crazy. Um, in fact, that's what general manager John Dorsey tried to do today was kind of temper those expectations a little bit. People are running a little bit wild right now, <laughs> but understandably so. Look, when you land a player of that caliber, when you add him to a team that's already got some very proven pieces, when you've got a quarterback finally in <laughs> Baker Mayfield, I understand why people are losing their minds. So 
Um, I've just been really um, kind of tickled by the last 24 hours to see people get caught up in it. Um, it's what sports are all about, right? We're supposed to have some, some good times here, so it's a good time. It's it's fun to dream. You have Jarvis Landry, you have Odell Beckham. Yeah. I mean, look at the – It's I can't remember a time where an offense had that. Now, now having said that, there are plenty of, of questions, and things, sure, but, but sure. the skill positions are off the charts here. Loaded. You know, I was trying to think of that the other day. I can't recall a Browns team in my lifetime maybe – that has been like this, right? I mean, you have to go back to like the Jim Brown, Paul Warfield, yeah. an, an up-and-coming Leroy Kelly, Gary Collins, those kinds of teams. Uh, you know, obviously those teams in the late 80s and 90s had plenty of firepower, but, but nothing like this, not when you have arguably the best wide receiver in the league, um, arguably one of the top five wide receivers in the league on the same team. So yeah, it's remarkable. Um, and we think, too, about the potential of what Kareem Hunt could mean to this team, you know, once we know more about a league suspension or whatever else. So, yeah, I mean, a wealth of riches, an embarrassment of riches in Cleveland. How often does that happen? And, and the amazing thing about it, 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 people haven't really thought about this. They're all young. It's not like these are guys right. that are past. These are right. guys that are all coming into right. their prime. Well, which is why, too, I think that John Dorsey has kind of had this go for it mentality right now because – at some point, they're all going to have to get paid, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. I mean, it's one thing now that you've got a $90 million contract for Odell Beckham. You've got a, a, a substantial, I can't remember the numbers right now off the top of my head, substantial numbers for Landry. Miles Garrett's going to get his at some point beyond his rookie contract. Same with Baker Mayfield. Nick Chubb is obviously a player that's going to have to get paid at some point. So, yeah, I mean, young and restless and let's go. Now, we've heard uh, potentially that they may be willing to trade Duke Johnson. And, and what, what have you made of that? I, I would not be a fan of that. I'm a huge Duke Johnson fan. I mean, I you know, you think about two years ago, Dave, he was their MVP, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt like last year he was really underutilized in that offense. Um, I think Freddie Kitchens would have some more things that he would want to do with him. Obviously, this all hinges on Kareem Hunt and what's going to happen there. But I would hold on to Duke Johnson. He's a very valuable player. Obviously, can can catch the ball, can run it inside the tackle a lot better than I think a lot of people give him credit for. Tough, team-oriented, my kind of guy. Uh, the defense is, has been upgraded as well. I know there's some, some sub subtraction, but you have to be pretty excited. That they're going to get after quarterbacks. Well, you know, to me, that's what, you know, the acquisition of Vernon and, and Richardson have done is that it allows, you know, teams are not going to be able to double and triple and quadruple team <laughs> Miles Garrett, Garrett on every single down, right? So you're going to get that you're going to get that pressure up the middle, which you had last year to a certain extent with Ogan Joby almost by himself, right? Now you're going to have bookended uh, defensive ends that can both get the, at the quarterback. Still a little bit worried about the linebacker position. Yeah. I know they've made a couple of changes here and there. This Taylor kid I've heard good things about as well, but I think you need an upgrade there. That Obviously, that's what the draft can be for. Uh, secondary also, you know, Denzel Ward played really well as a rookie. I'm a little concerned about the concussion situation. Um, but all in all, I mean, you don't have the huge gaping canyon-esque gaps that we've had to plug in the past, right? And what about this? I mean, Think about the job John Dorsey has done in just Remarkable. two. I mean, the, he hit the draft out of the park, and and he's hit on a number of free agents. Let's uh, trades more accurately. Right, right, right. Uh, if he does that again, he, no, you got to like their chances. Dave, it's incredible what he's done. It really is in this short amount of time. Now, you know, I think Sashi Brown and that previous regime deserves credit for some things. I mean, they they tore it down, right? They had the guts to take it down to its studs, mm -hmm. right? No one was really willing to do that. There was still this idea that, okay, you know, we can get young players and develop them and stay competitive. That doesn't work. We've seen that with the Indians for years, right? <laughs> we saw it with the Cavs for the, the better part of this season. So, um, but what Dorsey has done is just remarkable. And when you think about it, that he just got over doing the same thing with some help, obviously, in Kansas City. And you've seen what they've built there. I think the Browns are right at that, at that point as well. We've also seen some crazy things as far as uh, odds to win the Super Bowl, odds yeah. to win the They're AFC. dropping by the minute. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's, it just goes to show you the level of upgrade with the roster, I think. Totally agree. And now this is also, too, a byproduct of what the NFL is all about, right? We just haven't felt that here. You know, they always talk about, you know, kind of the, the worst to the first and the dramatic turnarounds, and we've seen it. You know, you've seen it as recently as with, with the Chiefs and the Rams, right? It just hasn't happened here. So I guess it's now it's Cleveland's turn. 
We're going to take a, a quick time out. Tom Withers, uh, can you stick around for one I can, more? sure. All right, Tom Withers from the Associated Press has covered the Browns for a long time. We're going to take a quick time out. It's more sports than Les Levine here on Cleveland.com. Special edition from Quicken Loans Arena, the Mid-American Conference quarterfinals on the men's side of things. We'll be right back after this timeout. My name is Les Levin. When my dad started Nature Stone, he created a solution for age-old concrete problems, unevenness, cracking, pitting, and more. Nature Stone solves all of these problems in garages, basements, and outdoor spaces. Nature Stone is beautiful, environmentally friendly, and affordable. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone. The only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the original mattress factory. Welcome back to More Sports and Les Levine, a special edition from Quicken Loans Arena, Mid-American Conference quarterfinals on the men's side of things. Pleased to be joined by the Associated Press's Tom Withers, who's covered the Browns for a long time. Tom, with the Browns roster upgrade has come some steps back, apparently, at least, in other of AFC North teams. You, you look at the Steelers lose Bell, they lose Antonio Brown, they lose uh, Jesse James. I know they've added some of that back in free agency. And the Ravens lose a number of defensive right, guys. Right. They do sign Earl Thomas, they do sign Mark Ingram. But it's kind of a changing dynamic, and I think that's what has really caught a lot of fans' eyes. Yeah, I think that's what has everybody excited here. You know, you finally see, you know, the 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 Pittsburgh and Baltimore boot that has been on Cleveland's neck for the better part of 20 years is being removed a little bit, right? Or at least kind of jabbing <laughs> at it a little bit. Get off of us. Um, and obviously Cincinnati's going to go in through probably what's going to be a pretty long rebuild down there. So yeah, I think that's part of what's got people excited. I think a lot of us looked at that as, hey, maybe that's what got John Dorsey excited as well. He, of course, poo-pooed that today and said, no, 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 I'm all about us. You know, he's kind of went with the Freddy Kitchens. If you're not wearing brown and orange, I don't care about you kind of thing. That said, I mean, yeah, the, the, the division has basically been turned on its head, right? I mean, it's, um, it's pretty remarkable. And as you said before, you know, for John to do this in such a short amount of time really, really says a lot about him. And not only that, the trust that the Haslam's have in him. And, you know, it took – Quite a while to get somebody that really took took it by the, the horns yeah. and went after. I mean, yeah. the, the Browns have been searching for that front office man since they came back right. in 99. Right, right. And every time they thought that they had that guy, something else would get in the way, right? Whether it was Tom Heckard or Joe Bain or whatever else. You know, sadly for, for Browns fans, there was just so much infighting, you know, within the power structure. People, you know, fighting for position and trying to, to get themselves on the good side of ownership that it really got in the way of putting a productive football team on the field. Now, everybody's excited about it. What are some areas that, you know, are cautionary? What, you know, what do you, what they need a kicker, Dave. They need a kicker <laughs> right away. Absolutely. And I guess Kutkowski is still available from what I understand. So um, that would be a, a real point of emphasis if I'm the team. Um, still, like I said to you before, I think there's some secondary issues that have to be resolved. You know, I think – couldn't hurt to get another good cornerback. Um, Demarius Randall is probably going to get a bigger contract here at some point. I still think tight end is a little bit of a weak spot. You know, I know they signed this, 
this other kid from Kansas City who can obviously help in Joku. Um, Seth Devolve has to stay healthier than he was last year. I think he can still be a productive player for them. Uh, some depth at running back and, you know, special teams and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, while they pu they plugged most of the major holes, yeah, there's some still things that they can tweak on that roster. And we know for certain there are going to be growing pains with Baker Mayfield. There, right. Nobody ever comes Or in. maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> this guy it might be the exception to the rule across the board, right? Is, is, is that possible, do you think? I, you know, it could be. I mean, from what we've seen, I mean, you know, he didn't seem to be bothered by anything last <laughs> no? year, right? Gets, yeah. Gets stuck in the middle of a, a, a strange situation, I thought. Um, you know, and then they, they benched to Rod Taylor, essentially. He takes off for 13 games and, and, you know, breaks the rookie passing record, you know, going past some of the great names of all time. So They switched I, play callers in the middle on him. Right? I mean, you name it. You know, he, he had everything, you know, working against him and still, you know, found a way to get that team to seven wins. So I'll put nothing past that kid. I'll be honest with you. I mean, and I think most people would agree with this. I, I thought he would be a talented player. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect this in year one. So, um, yeah, but there should still be some growing pains. I mean, now he's almost like that hitter that comes up in Major League Baseball and looks good the first time through, and then people figure out how to pitch to him. You're going to see some of that now where, where teams are going to be able to game plan and actually scheme for Baker. They're going to start taking away that rollout that Freddie Kitchens then mm -hmm. brought in, right? So they're going to contain him, force him to throw from the pocket. It's going to be a little bit different this year. But you know what? As you kind of alluded to, he's the type, he'll figure it out. I, I, I trust him to figure it out. What about keeping Freddie Kitchens. How important was that? Because that was the voice that clearly connected with him. I think it's the very reason that the Haslam's decided to hire him, right, full-time. Um, that relationship seemed to be everything for this team down the stretch last year. Obviously, there's a trust factor. There's confidence in each other. And I think the Haslam's kind of looked at it as, hey, you know what, whatever make Baker is making Baker happy right now and making Bayer, Baker play like he is, Let's stick with it, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So um, I like Freddie Kitchens a lot. I, I like his personality. I like what uh, the ingenuity that he sh showed with that offense last year. So, you know, what a tough gig, though, for your first time as a head coach at any <laughs> level. Here you go. You know, we, we heard um, John Dorsey say that he wasn't going for it at the Combine uh, yeah. about 10 days. Yeah. His actions don't no, say. Do, no. do they, they scream to me. He went for it. He did. He went for it. And, and whatever he tries to say now, <laughs> you're in, dude. You're in the deep end of the pool. So, you know, start swimming, which I'm sure, you know, John Dorsey knows what he's doing here. Um, he wouldn't have taken this on without the confidence in that quarterback, number one, uh, without knowing that he has a, a solid offensive line that could protect that quarterback. He's got enough playmakers, I think, on offense, obviously, now. And again, you know, some, some defensive holes here and there that they've got to fill, but by and large, I mean, this. there's no reason why this team shouldn't compete for the division next year. I mean, a lot of people think they're going to win, and I'm not, you know, you mentioned Pittsburgh and Baltimore and some of the subtractions that they've had. I'm not ready to give up on either of those teams yet. Yeah, uh, you know, history has taught yeah, us that. Yeah. Uh, but again, Vegas says yeah. behind the Chiefs and the Patriots, it's the Browns, which right. that's a nice place to be. Let me ask you this. You bring in Beckham, you have Landry. What do you think that does for Antonio Callaway and Higgins? Two young guys still learning the craft. I, I mean, by all accounts, Beckham and Landry are fanatical as far as practice yeah, goes. Yeah, I'm really, before that, Dave, Dave, I'm really interested to see what they're going to be like together. We've heard about how they play together in LSU and how they pushed each other on a daily basis. I'm really interested to see if those two can take, by being together, can take their level up a notch. My God, what do you have then, right? If those guys can do that. So, I mean, two perfect young guys, are two, two perfect guys for the young guys to learn from. You know, I think we saw enough in Callaway last year where you were really intrigued, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he made a couple big plays. Unfortunately, he had the fumble in Houston after the long game. Um, he's got to keep himself straight off the field, but I think we saw some, some maturity and some development. I think a lot of us forgot last year that he hadn't played football in a couple of right. years. And he's suddenly out there with, <laughs> with the best of the best. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about him. And, you know, Higgins had a breakout year for him, and I was – I was glad to see the Browns, you know, wanting to wanting to hang on to him. So, um, which still hasn't happened. They've only given him the, the fifth round tender, but but yeah, he's done a lot of good things. And, and they had a couple in, in Ratley and in Willies and some other young guys that they had on the practice squad last year. They know what they're looking for in wide receivers, I'd say. And and I would think because 
Beckham and, and Landry, they're going to they're gonna kind of demand the young guys do it the right way. Let's hope so. I would think they would as well. And I think, like I said, I think they're going to drive each other. You know, is there a little bit of the diva in both of them? Yeah, but that's what wide receivers are about. It's also what makes them right. as good as they are. So, and I'm not really worried about that. And I think, you know, as, as John Dorsey alluded to as well today, Freddie Kitchens is the right guy for that. I mean, he is going to hold players accountable. And I've heard that not only from wide receivers, but offensive linemen and, and most of the veterans that I talked to last year that I trusted. Freddie Kitchens holds people accountable. That's something that Hugh Jackson never did. Now the Browns traded away Kevin Seidman, a really good player. Really strong player, yeah. To get another really good player in Vernon. Are you concerned about that? And I mean, let, let's not kid ourselves. Austin Corbett doesn't need to step in and be Kevin Zeitler. No, no. But in a couple of years, you want him to be, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. But no, but I heard really good things last year about Austin Corbett, and not just from Joel Batonio, who played with him briefly at, at Nevada. You know, several of the linemen told me that this kid is a hard worker, that he wants to get better. Um, that's half the battle, you know? He came in knowing, you know, that he didn't know everything, was willing to ask questions, was willing to work hard. That's all you want in a young kid, you know? And then, and we forget, too, that you know, that was the first pick of the second round. That's an important, you know, building block and piece going forward. So I like Austin Corbett. I think he'll be fine. Well, and, and keep in mind, John Dorsey made that pick, and look what he did after it. The guys he picked after it, Nick Chubb, uh, he hit on those picks. He had an A-plus draft last year, let's yeah. be honest. And you know yeah. what? And he got the biggest one right, which was the quarterback. I mean, you know, I, I was still, and I'm still interested to see whether or not Sam Darnold or Baker Mayfield becomes the better quarterback. That'd be fine if that's a jump ball, as far as Browns fans are concerned, right? But yeah, he got that one right. That is everything. That, more than anything, Dave, is the reason why we're talking about what we are today. They got the quarterback right. And we've only been waiting for that since 99. Yeah, huh? Well, you can go further back than that, I would say, right? Yeah. yeah. Probably pretty close. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let me ask you this. You, you listened to John Dorsey. What did, today, what did you take away from that? Uh, mostly about the, the tempering of the expectations. Like, let's slow down a second here, everybody. You know, it's you can dream about the Super Bowl. Let's not start printing up the tickets quite yet. So um, that was my my biggest takeaway. He kind of he kind of dodged some of the other bigger things that we tried to ask him about. You know, the interest in Eric Berry, uh, any kind of resolution on Kareem Hunt. He doesn't know about that right now. The league, I don't think, even knows about that right now. So um, I just think. You know, Dorsey, in, in the way that Dorsey can do it, kind of, let's just let's just hang on here, people. You know, we're doing the right thing. We're building this block by block. You know, it's not quite a castle yet. It's getting there, but let's take our time. Yeah, as as a objective observer, do you ever sit I try to be, David. I, yeah, <laughs> it's, I know it's tough. But, I mean, you, do you just sit back and go, just look at where the roster was, Oh, a year ago. I mean, even even just before free agency, before the beginning of the league year last year. Oh, Dave, think where of, it is now. Think about where we were on March 14th or 15th last year. I'm not even sure. Jarvis Landry wasn't even no, here yet, right? No, he wasn't. Baker Mayfield certainly wasn't here. You were bringing back a coach that had just gone 0 and 16 and 1 and 31 over two years. It was absolutely as deep as it's ever been in the depths of hell here in Cleveland. Yeah. And and here we are a year a year later talking about that they're one of the top five teams for the Super Bowl. I mean, is this really happening? You know, pinch yourself kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's really remarkable to turn around again, though. That yeah, they're they're a, they're a, a paper tiger right now, though, right? Or right. a paper lion right now. And, and that's that's a legitimate no you know, question. That's, that's a legitimate uh, assessment of yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. But boy, it's nice to have a paper tiger as opposed uh, you to know a, what? What it, did we have before? All it took was 20 torturous <laughs> years for us to get here, but we're finally here. Tom Withers, appreciate the time. Dave, Thanks my for pleasure. Joining. Thank you. I feel like big time here with yeah. the game going in the background. This has been great. Thank you. Tom Withers from the Associated Press uh, covers the Browns and other things here in Cleveland. We appreciate his time. And that'll do it for uh, this edition of More Sports and Less Levine on Cleveland.com, our special edition from the Mid-American Conference. Have a great night, everyone.